one of the most important questions that you need to ask yourself regularly is, what is my attitude towards the church? It's probably not a question that we ask ourselves very often. I know that I haven't. It's important to be intentional about our relationship with those who are in the community of the church. In Deuteronomy 12, 23, it says that the blood is the life. Now, when the Bible was written, we didn't know much about DNA and how all that works, but it's interesting now through the lens of modern science to think about how important the blood of Christ is, that His DNA is on the church. It is what we, it's the blueprint of the church. And so what I'm going to talk to you a little bit about today is the importance, the need of the church. And so the first thing we want to talk about is the letter C. The church is constant. In Hebrews 10, 14, it says, For by a single offering He has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Hebrews 10, 14. And so we also see there in Hebrews 9, 25 that it's the, the high priest of the Jews didn't sacrifice his own blood, but Jesus did sacrifice his own blood once and for all. And so the church is a constant. In my own life, when I was diagnosed with leukemia and I was in the hospital for a couple of weeks, I had over 300 visitors come through my door. It was an amazing encouragement from the church, those fellow believers, that community, that constant presence of the people of God. The next is humble. We need to be humble. The church in the DNA of Christ is humble. I like to re reference it as a humble hustle. In Hebrews 9.28, it says, he, appeared, he will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for Him. There's that idea of attitude towards the church. We're eagerly waiting for Christ through that community of the church. In the popular television show, The Office, Dwight Schrute quits his job. And the amazing thing is, is not only is he the number one salesman, but they begin to notice there's all these other things that he did, from watering the plants to rearranging uh, Michael Scott's toys on his desk how he likes. And so if you think about the church, if it disappeared, what a tragedy that would. How much good is the church doing that maybe we don't even really recognize? And even from a worldly standpoint, how much good does the church do humbly that a lot of people don't know about? I know a lot of people growing up and they look at preachers and they think, man, how awesome are preachers or elders or deacons or shepherds? But some of my biggest heroes in the church are the people who never get up in front of anyone, but they're humbly hustling to serve God. In Hebrews 9.28, once again, it says, eagerly waiting for Him. And then the idea of understanding. It takes humility to try and understand people's perspective. It doesn't mean that we have to agree with everything they're saying, but to understand where they're coming from. We have a high priest. Hebrews 4.15, that, that does sympathize with us. He knows what it's like to live this life. He lived it perfectly, and he had the proper perspective, but he was willing to hear others and see it from theirs. Also, the idea of reaching. The church is constantly reaching. Hebrews 10.24 says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works. A lot of times that verse 25 is what we talk about when we talk about the church, not forsaking the assembly, and that's correct. But why is it wrong to miss the assembly? Well, how else are we to stir each other for good works? Have you ever left the church encouraged to do good things? How often does your church talk about doing good things? I feel like every time we leave that assembly, we should be looking for opportunities to serve each other. How does that work? Well, it's also communal. Chapter 10, verse 22 of Hebrews, it says, Let us draw near. In chapter 11, it says, God is not ashamed to be called their God. That's verse 16. And then Acts 2, it says that they had all things in common. When we see a need within the church, we move to fulfill that. I have a ginormous box of envelopes from all over the country of people reaching out to me, well wishes, help, hoping and praying that I would get better. I can't tell you how much of an encouragement that was. People that I may have not ever met, but through CYC and different events, have heard my name and took time out of their day. A lot of times I remember growing up, our card ministry, I might have thought or taken it flippantly and thought, you know, what does that really accomplish? Well, let me tell you, it's an amazing encouragement to receive that. I remember uh, the male ladies at the hospital coming in my room and going, are you some kind of rock star? Like, 
who are all these people? We've never gotten this much mail for anyone else. And it was an amazing thing to explain to them the power of the church. And it was all over my walls in that room. And then finally, healing. In the KJV, it says, He is a rewarder of those who diligently... There's an idea of attitude towards God, attitude towards the church. Those who diligently seek Him, chapter 11 and verse 6. We do what we can with the enthusiasm that the Lord has given us, and we let Him handle the impossible. We all have a need for the church.